it is such a lovely day such a lovely morning today and uh Arnold Paul Mutegek is my name welcome once again to me and geography okay uh we were dealing with uh, field work and uh, i'm so happy thank you all for those who have subscribed and for those that have gone on to view and support this channel uh you're very nice people thank you and uh, today we want to continue with field work and uh, we want to start from where we stopped where did we stop we had completed the uh, pre-field activities uh, that is the first stage of field work so join me this journey today as i continue to deal divulge into field work so today i want to go to the next stage that is stage number two remember i said field work is having three stages the first one is the preparation for the field Secondly is the real or the actual field work stage or the stage where you go into the field and collect information. So this is where we are today and uh, in this stage it involves going to the field to collect information and uh, when you go to collect information what are you supposed to have or what is required of you? Basically you are required to use all your senses when you go to the field and what am I talking about? You will need to use your eyes to observe that is observation method you will need to basically have a pen and a notebook with you so that you record some information got from the field because it is data collection so it means you should be able to get information that you don't have or that you have been looking for then you need to use your mouth to interview ask questions and get answers obviously then sampling, we shall look at those methods in detail. Basically, you, you pick out one to represent the many. We shall do talk about measurements because when you go to the field, you're also required to carry out measurements or measuring some of the phenomena in the field. Field sketching, which basically involves you maybe drawing the map of the area where you have gone to study map orientation, uh, equipping yourself with a map of the area so that you know where you're going and what you're studying. Is it real or does it reflect what is in the ground? Then the questionnaire method, uh, we shall also look at that, that involves you sending questions to the field and uh, getting answers then as well using the question, the, that questionnaire to ask questions in the field. Let me first start with the basics or basics about attempting questions about the methods of data collection. What you should know as a researcher. Are you going to just go to the field and get information? What are the basics? In other words, what do you need to know? What should be there? Or in attempting questions to do with the methods of data collection, what do you need as a scholar to understand? One, the method should always be stated in writing about how you use the method. State it first. After stating it, what next? Define it. Define it. In a definition, we shall be looking at each of those methods and what ought to know when defining it. Then a student must show how the method was used. In this case, in other words, you must bring out the tool you used while using that method. If you say you interviewed, what tool do you use to interview? If you say you observed, what did you use to observe? So, and then basically the last part of that is what information did you get while using the method? Those are three parts that should always be mentioned. So, an examiner requires you to have the method set, define it, and give what you got. That is how you qualify to score something or a mark from that method of data collection. So let's start with observation method. What is observation? Like I said, the first point is define it. So what is observation? It refers to the use of the human eyes. Anyway, some scholars have been told to say naked eyes. Mm, I don't have a problem with that. Naked eyes. I don't know if the eyes that are dressed are they the ones which are in uh, specs. I don't know. But uh, basically, it's first the use of the human eyes to interpret geographical phenomena. Watch the words I'm using. To interpret. We are not saying to see geographical phenomena. We are saying to interpret. Because you use them and interpret what is in the field. You look at them and think about them 
then come out with a final answer or an observation. So basically, you continue and say, using my eyes, I saw, mark the tense, I saw the physical features at, you mentioned where you went for field work, and then uh, perhaps that is the area. Then for example, what did you see? For example, let me give you a good example. Using my eyes, I saw the physical features at maybe uh, such and such uh, an area, and I saw maybe such and such a hill. You mentioned the name of the physical feature you saw. In geography, we mark names of local examples. So, mention that local name from the field. Perhaps you should have asked someone to tell you the name of that feature. So, NB, in this case, the eyes are the tools. Like I said, the tools should be mentioned. The eyes are the tools used to get information. And then the information got should be stated. Like I said, local names. Don't forget that. It is very, very, very important in our research. Okay. Method number two, measurement method. What is measurement? Therefore, a student is required to state it as this refers to the use of marked and unmarked instruments to determine what are you determining when you're measuring the weight, height, distance, etc. of geographical phenomena. In other words, using uh, for example, if you are going to measure, what are you measuring? Let's say you are at a learning site and you are measuring or you are interested in determining the weight of uh, a particular fish species. So using maybe a weighing scale, that is an instrument, I determined, not I measured, I determined. That is what that is what we are always interested in. Do not use the same word as in the method to define the method. I determined the, what do you determine? The weight maybe of a mature nail patch. Mm -hmm. If you determine it, then what next? And found out that it was, that is the result we're interested in. What did you get? Like I said, each method should have three aspects. The first one, define the method. I mean, state the method, define it, and give how you used it, involving what tool did you use, and then lastly, what did you get as a, a result because you are a researcher therefore you must have got information that took you to the field so that is for the measuring uh, method make sure you also bring out the units because you don't say i measured the weight of a mature nail patch what was it in units was it in kilograms was it in grams etc those are very important things to note away from that we can also look at the interview method and uh, interview You've seen people do interviews on TV and on where. And uh, for this case, since we are researchers and we are going to the field, an interview in this case should involve a face-to-face. -face. I talk to you, you talk to me. Face-to-face -face interaction. And if it is face-to-face, -face, what does it involve? Asking of oral questions. Not sign language, asking of oral questions and then obviously if I ask you an oral question, I expect an oral answer. And getting oral answers, that's a simple definition. Therefore, we are saying this refers to the first-to-first -first interaction that involves asking of oral questions and getting oral answers. I've tried to underline those important words, first-to-first -first interaction, oral questions, oral answers. It must be, those words must be there in your definition. So using my mouth, that you're going on to mention how you use that method. Using my mouth, that is the tool in brackets. Mm -hmm. What did you do when you used your mouth? I asked, I don't say I interviewed, no. I asked. So what happened when you asked? You mentioned the name of the person you asked. I asked me, say, Mr. Katamba, or Mr. Chichoncho, etc., to tell me about what did you want to know, or the historical background of, you mentioned that area where you went for study. The last part of the method is, what did you get? And he told me that, you mentioned what he told you, what is the historical background, what did he tell you? If you asked him about the problems they face in the field, what problems did he tell you, etc., that is the information got. And NB down there for you, the underlined words are a must in the description of the interview method. That is first-to-first -first interaction, oral questions, and oral answers. Then this method is used to get information about what can't be observed in the field. 
For example, let me give you an example. You cannot say, um, uh, uh, okay, uh, you cannot say, I observed the historical background where. Mm -mm. <laughs> I think you are getting me. You don't say, I observed the historical background. Why? That information can't be observed. So the only way to get the historical background is basically you can interview. That is how the method is applicable. Okay? You may equally not observe the location, but you can ask someone or interview someone to give you the location of that area. So that's why we're saying this method is used to get information about what can't be observed in the field. Lastly, the interviewer, that is you, the person doing research, or the researcher, or you, the student, must be in contact with the person. That's what we said originally, face to face. Must be in contact with the person to be interviewed. That is the respondent or the interview in the field. That's what makes it an interview, face to face interaction. Three parts. One, define. Two, what tool did you use to get information? In this case, our tool was the mouse. And then what did you get the information from the field? I think we are still at par. And then we continue. Let's look at uh, perhaps uh, two more or three more methods. Sampling method. What is a sample? In simple terms, a sample is part of a whole. So you get a bigger fraction and remove part of it. That becomes a sample. So what is sampling in our own understanding? It refers to picking of part of a whole, picking a part of a whole, like the whole big thing, you pick a part of it to represent that big one or that whole. So we go on and say, how is the student supposed to present it? You say, we picked Mr. It means that person you are picking should be representing the rest. You are not going to interview whoever is in the field to get information. You can just get one person to represent the menu. So you say, we picked Mr. Dash or Mr. Chichoncho, the chairperson. That is a sample. Of, you mentioned that area where you went for field work, to tell us the problems faced by people of that area. And then he told that, us that they face a problem of. When you say they face a problem of, it means now you want to give us the results of your sampling. Three parts. Define the method. What did you, what tool did you use? And then basically for this case, the person you picked, what information did he give you as a representation of the whole group as a sample? And B, the sample should bear the same traits. The other word for traits is characteristics as the rest of the population or as the rest of the geographical phenomena that you are interested in studying. Brother, brothers and sisters, that is what we call sampling. Then we can try out another method which is basically recording. And I say a student may note it as, what is to record? This one here does not uh, take up the usual recording of you get uh, like a, a vid, uh, video or you get, uh, a, you get sound bites, not really. For us in this case, we are interested in noting down or writing down. So this refers to the use of a pen and a notebook to note down information got from the field. That is what we use to record. So what do you need? A pen and a notebook. Maybe even a pencil for the case of uh, some of us that you are good at drawing sketch maps of the area. It is also needed. So how do you notice? You say, using my pen and notebook, pen and notebook, those are the tools you're using. That is one. I noted the, mm -hmm. you're now trying to tell us the information you got when noting. I noted the, let's say, uh, the Problems faced by people living at, you mentioned the area where you went. For example, then you mention the problem that you got, and then you conclude. So basically, that is the recording method. Like I said, three things are needed. One, define, state the method and define it. Talk about the tool used. After talking about the tool used, go ahead and bring out the results of what you got. Now, from there, let's talk at uh, general notes about the methods of data collection. Things that you should always have. Be careful uh, as you're trying to attempt this part of the methods of data collection. I have tried to understand this as this is one of the most set parts in geography paper one uh, for both O and A level. 
One, a student should not use the same word as the method in the definition of that particular method. I come again. A student should not use the same words as the method in the definition of that particular method. For example, someone may say, recording. Mm -hmm. It refers to the recording of information from the field. No, 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 no. That is very, very wrong. Times a hundred and thousand and whatever means. Very wrong. Recording does not refer to recording, no. We say recording refers to the use of a pen and a notebook to not. So that's why I'm saying, that's why I'm learning those words. It means they are not supposed to be used. Whereby some say recording refers to recording information. No, this is very wrong. Or measurement refers to the measuring of your, no. Don't use the same method to define that particular method. That is very wrong. Please take note, uh, dear friends. Uh, that concludes our segment for today or for this episode. I want to wish you luck. I love you all and uh, I'll continue to ask you to subscribe and view our content, subscribe to our channel, invite your friends, relatives and other people to equally subscribe and learn from this channel. Thank you very much. Our YouTube channel is Me and Geography. Go ahead and subscribe. God bless you.